If you haven't heard about Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Lawful Stupid just jumped over. First of all, it's free, and we love that. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, wherever you're at, on the go. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you. There are a lot of other vendors out there, a lot of platforms that they will make sure your podcast gets to. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with zero, I say again, with zero minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Last time on Lawful Stupid. It's hot as fuck as you guys hang out and watch Delmore Scoop Ashes. Finnegan, I'm I'm crunching the numbers here. I got you a negative two. I see him like passed out, right? I pull him. You're able to pull him out um, and then you get real burnt up in the process. Finnegan, Finnegan. Don't you have a god? Yes. Suddenly, you're cool. You look around and you're on your ship. You're home. What is this? You hear Law's voice in your head. Do your job, Terry. Uh, Terry. That's not me. I just want to save my friend. How do I save him? Say yes. Say yes. <sighs> yes. <gasps> oh, get it off! Get it off of me! <sighs> I looked in that cavern. There were no mechanisms to open that door. Or we say the thing to it. You go back you to the central chamber, the hottest chamber, down the central path to the great door, and you say... A candle that burns, twice as bright, or last half as long, in the night, but one candle was burned, will later return, to bathe their souls in the light. You solved my door puzzle! And so there you are, uh, and you see these large brick red doors in this subterranean onyx cavern. Uh, we have Finnegan Morris who just said out loud this key phrase in Elvish, causing the doors to slowly swing open, revealing first a blast of just, you guys didn't think it could get any hotter. Oh, but a fucker. And then this roar, this heat just, just pours out of this even lower subterranean cavern and just this blast of ash, gray and dark, just fills the air. What do you do? Uh, co- cover face, for sure. Cover face and mouth. Oslo falls on her back, just bodily falls on her back. <laughs> She's just so done with this shit, pulling her hood over her mouth. Peregrine's holding up her shield, trying to block herself for most of it. Yeah, shield, for sure. Or I guess covering face specifically, just to block as it like pours. Or I got a pretty big shield. We can all get behind this. I don't. <laughs> I'm a small person. Sitting it says, "We only have a little bit more to go." Do we? We finish this. How do you know that? How do you, you know don't know that? that? Um, I... it could be hours. It could be days. Um, <sighs> is it like? Is it like? Stopping my vision? Is it that yes. thick or is it just like, ah! Yes, it is. So I can't see. It's like a sandstorm, but full of ash. Gotcha. Well, that's not great. Um, okay. Are you sure we can't just tell him the bird is dead? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that bird is not dead. Can I hear anything coming from inside? Make a perception check. Other than just wind... Make a perception check. <laughs> I'm gonna use my new dice that I bought. That's a dangerous game. Not the ones you stole. Ooh. That's a big eight. No. No, you cannot hear anything. Good. That's what I wanted to have happen. Good. I mean, I just, I guess I have to start slowly moving forward. Um shield in front of me trying to block as much of it as I can and just step by step like a lot of trepidation in my walk because I can't see anything so it's kind of like more shuffling I guess like easing easing his way forward it is a matter of moments as you ease your way forward slowly but surely your vision blinded by this onslaught of ash and you make your way further and further until there is an opening and you can finally see. And what you see is towering above you, a ceiling, a very large ceiling, concave, dome-like, with various cracks throughout it through which leaks slowly and deadlyly lava. 
as it pours from this. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I'm now that I have. Uh, I turn back to the opening and say, uh, "Come to the sound of my voice. There's there's an opening. Come to the sound of my voice." And now you all see it as you pile out. Not only this this large cavern roof above you leaking with with with, with lava, but as well above you. Standing about 20 feet tall, uh, smoldering and regal and sleeping, the phoenix. 20 feet. 20 feet tall on a perch well above you in this cavern. There's a central spire that comes up made of stone where you see this bird sleeping in its large nest. Uh, you notice that its, its body appears to be not a great flaming bird, but smoldering. There are small bits throughout this, this feather uh, exterior that light up as it inhales and exhales like the drawing of a cigarette. I think we found our bird. So in order to come through this ash, Oslo's definitely put on her goggles at this point. Mm-hmm. She's standing there staring up yeah. at this bird that could eat her in a bite. Do I see any way to like walk up? Like, uh, like so it's on a perch. Is there any like ramps or natural cliff faces to get higher up? No. So, like, so for us, she's on a perch, or it is on a perch, and there's no real way to like get close to it. Not, not that the, I can ascertain. That immediately strikes out to you. But as you're trying to kind of figure this out, you see below this phoenix just a a pile, a vast um, swath of ash that lays at the pillar of this this large bird's feet, and serendipitously as you approach one feather falls from the phoenix gently wafting to the ground and just before it reaches this pile of ash it bursts into flames and becomes ash itself and you see movement you see one of these small suit sprites that you had seen earlier and it nestles in this pile of ash Did we kill a bunch of phoenix babies before? I think, I think we killed a bunch of feathers. No. We no, didn't. well, it's just magic. It's resident energy. It's We didn't kill any babies. Are but you sure? <laughs> Are you absolutely sure? Harry, it's a charade. It's all fake. Ah. Welcome to the Matrix. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it, it's fine. The real question... How are we going to get a 20-foot bird out this tunnel and into the ship? Short how are we going to destroy get, How are we going to get to the 20-foot bird? Get the 20-foot bird out of the volcano onto a ship, which can I emphasize again, are flammable. Boats burn. A lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Nope, all those things track. However, <laughs> mission resen- uh, stays the same. We need to get this flaming bird into the ship. Alive? Did he say alive? Well, no, or he alive? didn't say he preferred it alive. No, actually, I'm pretty sure he was pretty doesn't clear it, he wanted it alive, actually. Does, no, doesn't it burn? Doesn't it burn if it's dead? Well, oh. yeah, and then it turns into ash. So it's gone. Yeah. yeah. So I, now that I'm remembering this, because <laughs> let me tell you, it's fucking hot in here, and he, he 100% wants this bird alive. He, he said it was very critical the bird comes back alive before it dies. Right, right, right. Is it an intelligent creature? Could we ask it nicely to come with us? Well, I, I don't, you could ask if it's an intelligent creature. Um, ah. I think that's the best play, right? Um being regal and and appreciative and humble with such a majestic creature the idea of trying to outsmart it murder it or subdue it uh, uh, odds are pretty low on our on our to end hit it with a rock okay, friends yeah i cannot stress enough how i just don't think that's a strong start i would not go a rock at a large bird i do have something no, else that may interest it 
<laughs> one bird, one stone. But, uh, no, I, I how how does the saying go? <laughs> uh, if you hit one big bird with one small stone, you die in a volcano. That's a very specific <laughs> that situation. That's a bit specific. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, Benigan, what did you have? Uh, I can produce some berries. Maybe that are good for it to eat. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Offer it food instead of a rock that you so desire. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we uh, throw rocks at it. I think that's bad, right? That's Nobody a bad even idea. likes rocks. Who likes rocks? Um, yeah, I don't it's... think it's a terrible idea to offer it food, but... Um, hey, we should be careful offering just, it can what it can eat. Can speak to this thing? I think, I think if we offer it what it can eat, it might try to eat one of us. Well, perhaps you, uh, a few of you should stand back so that all of us are not seen yeah. at the same time. Uh, I, well, I don't think, I honestly don't think trying to deceive a creature with such a regal presence is the play. I think it would, I mean, what if it detects our deception? I'm not trying to deceive it. I just don't want you to get burned if it blasts me with fire. (laughs) Well, sure, but I just don't think hiding is a call. I think... We can stand back, but from what I know about phoenixes, they're supposed to be like majestic creatures and honorable. Now, all of the, what I've read could be a hundred percent wrong, and he, we could die here. He hundred percent also said they were as big as chickens. <laughs> Who said that? Have yeah. you that? Oh, uh, freaking! Yeah, I did. Bird. I did because my history check resulted in that. There is only one way to find out. I, I think you might have the best opportunity. I think you're the most connected with the world. Um, or you at least seem way more in tune with the earth, the earth itself. And so as you say that, oh, is there a pile of, of those ashes near me that's not near one of those uh, sprites specifically? They're mostly just like a like a like I say, a very 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 large pile underneath of where the phoenix is perched. Kid, how, how far is that from me? Uh, it would be a, a ways um, sixty feet. Okay, I want to. Um, I want to travel over to it to the, to the pile before sneakily before Finnegan goes anywhere. I'm handing him my shield. Just in case. He has a shield. Yeah. Does, yeah, does mine, yeah, just just I wouldn't <laughs> use yours because it's it's metal. Oh, he has oh, my no, fucking druids. Druids don't do that. I know. I uh, thank you, friend, but I have one. He's okay. gonna die. And as you approach Soot Mountain, there's a low faint movement subtle at first and becomes more animated, more scuttering, more movement, more energy as you see the, this this ash become to become alive, to move and shift and change and you see hundreds of these these little soot sprites that you had encountered earlier and they move left, right, swirling, swirling in a circle and they come together and they meld in front of your very eyes and they take on the shape of a of a phoenix so what you know now to be a phoenix a very very large bird but it looks wrong it looks like it is made of death it looks like it is this this ash and decay and it stands before you and it screams (laughs) roll initiative awesome so what do the three levels of exhaustion do? Uh, so you have what disadvantage on all ability checks, your speed is halved, and you have disadvantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Okay. Yeah. Is the initiative an adi- disadvantage initiative is an ability check? Initiative is not an ability okay. check. Initiative is just an initiative nope, roll. it's totally initiative separate. Uh, not 20, sir. Motherfucker. Right, Finnegan, so. six. Man, a 14. 10. Awesome. Oh. I don't want to get eaten. 
I don't want to burn. <laughs> there you go, Jen. Does your next remix. <laughs> I don't want to get hurry, 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 hurry. I don't want to burn. Hey there, great one. Do you want to do on your fucking toe? He's 60 feet away. He is. I, <laughs> I don't know that I can do anything, honestly and truly. Um, you take the dash action yeah, and move okay. 30 feet. Uh, no, I can't. Um... I could take dash action and move 25 feet forward. Um, so that's what I'll do. Okay. I gotta get in range. Yep. Yeah, so I just rush up. Shield drawn. That puts me 35 feet behind Finnegan. Right. It is Perry's turn. I'm going to get as close to it as I can with my glaive drawn, um, including using my action to dash, which if my my speed is halved, yes. yes. So you can do so the normal can, movement speed. <laughs> yeah, which is 30 whole feet. You move 30 feet forward. Rushes past me. <laughs> Oslo. <laughs> We're still level one, correct? Correct. Mm-hmm. Damn it. Mm-hmm. No cutting action for you. I know. Um, so we can move and draw, right? Move and draw. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, move and draw both my daggers. I'm not going to go directly towards it. I'm going to go to the side. What's your moving speed? It's thirty. It's fifteen. Well, yeah, it's fifteen. I'm gonna d- I'm gonna double move. So, dash. Okay. okay. And you want to, but you want to go the long way around, huh? Yeah. I don't want to go okay. directly at it. I want to go to the side. Sure. Yeah, it's not a big issue. Uh, it is the Dark Phoenix's turn. <laughs> it's never good when Shane smiles <laughs> when he's rolling dice. No, it's just... Um, mm-hmm. yeah. so I, I scaled this encounter. I wasn't expecting you guys to have three levels of exhaustion. It's fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> well. Or was he? That's neat. We can hope. Mm. Um, what we have? Uh, Finnegan, you take 20 damage. Finnegan, Finnegan you're going to take some damage. What's your AC? Uh, let me pull her back. I think it's 14. Right? Yeah, 14. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> uh, you don't mean I'm points. good. You mean you're good. Six yeah. points of poison damage. As uh, night, night. this phoenix raises both these, these dark wings and... <laughs> pushes them downwards as these, this just pile of ash and debris is just blown in your direction and you just have to <coughs> breathe it all in and it's very damaging to your system and it's hot and it's miserable and it is your turn. Uh, so I fall to one knee, I guess, but as I stand back up. So am I, it's like, what, how distance from me is it? Am I right so up it's in still, space? It's still above you. Um, so it's about 10 feet out from you and then 20 feet up. Okay, so I guess the question I have oh. about... Um, oh, no, no, I'm it? sorry. This one is on the ground. I apologize. The okay, actual this. phoenix is 20 feet up. This one's just on the ground about okay. 10, 10 feet in front of you. My, my bust. My bust. Gosh. Okay. Um, so what I'll do is my eyes turn white. Um, I grab my lion suit necklace. And with the other hand, I reach out, and from underneath its feet, uh, a series of vines begin to grow up, and weeds sprout up around this thing's feet. And I'm using Entangle, of course. Um, Same thing? 13. What kind? Uh, It is a strength. 13. I don't remember. If we do meat, or is it a meter beat? Meats beats. Meats beats. Yeah. Cool. He this is a 13, fun battle. So. Uh, and then I'll retreat back um, <laughs> 15 feet. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, is nope on out of there? It is Delmore's turn. So how, how far did you retreat back? 15 feet. 
Okay, so you're... 25, 25 okay. yeah. Okay, um, yeah. So I'm going to move 12 feet up. Mm-hmm. Rounding down, so that should put me at 23 feet away from the Phoenix, give or take. Give or take, yeah. Okay, um, so I'm going to move forward, and I, I uh, shield kind of at the ready between it and I, hoping for the best, and I kind of unswirl that chain on my right arm, um, and I'm going to do a, a vine whip, and I'm going to whip at the Phoenix. Real good. What's the range on that? Pretty good. <laughs> it's 30 feet. Okay. <laughs> do the damn thing. Oh, it's Thorn Whip, technically, I guess. Um, lowest... 15 to hit? That hits. Oh, nice. It's a large creature. Right. It's kind of hard to miss. I didn't know it was large. Well, it's huge, technically, I think. 20 feet tall. Oh, for some reason, when you described the Avatar, I thought it was an Avatar of the Phoenix, not the Phoenix. No, it yeah, it's, like, it's like a dark shadow of the Phoenix. Yeah, but I didn't realize it was the same. Same size. Yeah, that's same, fine. Same size. Um, I did... Three damage, and that is going to be, uh, it says piercing damage. Okay. And then do you move it 10 feet close? Oh, no, it's too big. You can't. It's got to be yeah, larger, it's gotta be smaller. larger, smaller, yeah. Uh, anything else on your turn? Um, no, that's going to cover it. Perry. Can I, <clears throat> if I only use my movement to move... Can I get within striking distance of it? No. Hmm. I don't really do long range stuff yet. I can really only cast Glaive. Um, <laughs> you can cast Throw Glaive. <laughs> no, not this Throw Glaive. I mean, yeah. You, oh, I do you have know a dagger. dagger to get within no range for next time. Uh, yeah. Or run, and you'll be you'll be if you run, you'll be. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm. No, I'm. I'm going to use my I'm gonna dash and end movement to get close to as yeah, close you're, to you're, it as I can. You're pretty much right in its business. Yeah, um, and if there is one of my friends near it, I'm going to get between my friend and this Phoenix. Glaive out, correct? Glaive out. Yep. My dual ended harpoon glaive. Got it. Uh, that'll bring us to Oslo. So I realized a thing. Um, Go on. If I continue my movement uh, and I only do the normal movement where you allow me to put away daggers and draw bow, was that too much drawing? Yes. yes? No, go nuts. I have a fucking bow, guys. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so that'll do, thing. That'll do. <laughs> I have a fucking bow. Oh, it's a disadvantage, right? You just didn't want to use it last turn because you wouldn't have got uh, your sneak attack. But yes, go ahead. Right. Ugh. Uh, seven. No, that does not meet the grade. As you draw your bow quickly and hit, like, because this is a lot of stuff that you're doing, mm-hmm. so you kind of put away these daggers and you pull up the bow and then you, you knock the arrow and you, you pull it back and it just sails wide. But I have a way to hit it. But you have a way to hit it. Uh, that will bring up the Dark Phoenix, who is going to will draw back and bring both of its wings down again with a gust of ash. Uh, one directed towards Peregrine and one directed towards Finnegan. Uh, well, Perry's is a natural one. <laughs> Finnegan, yours is so a... So it immediately stops attacking. Blessed. Her, you know? I'm blessed. Your, yours is a 14. Then again. Uh, yeah, so that's not gonna meet. So I, um, it's like I bring up my shield and just kind of uh, down. Not Delmore. Then again. Then again, it meets. Oh, sorry. I thought you said Delmore. Sorry, my bad. It meets. Okay, so per our rules, uh, that's a glancing blow, so it's gonna do half damage. Uh, one damage. One poison damage. Oof. <laughs> you, you doing okay, bud? That one I'm damage. I'm not doing very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is your turn. Then again, you have that going for you. You've won the deal. Let me try some crazy here. Please. Uh, I'm just checking my stats for one quick second. That's, <laughs> That's a good, good. It's always a good thing. <laughs> uh, I th- uh, okay. It's a crazy thing I want to do, but I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. That Phoenix is asleep, so I will yell to... Um, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. How far is Peregrine from me? 
Uh, you moved backwards, what, 15 feet? Yes. Yeah. So about 20-ish feet forward. Ugh. How far? Who is someone within 15 feet of me? <laughs> I am, for sure. Delmore I'm, would be 100%, yeah. I'm at 23 feet away. Can so. I can, can I say to him, and I don't know how this is going to work, you just tell me, I, what I want to do is I'll run towards, uh, towards Delmore and say, give me a boost until like toss me and like lift me just as oh. much as possible. I just need like... T- yeah, feel ready. I'm considering it like a jump. What 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 is your objective? I want to I want him to jump me as high as he can into the air. At the, time the, t- at the time that I jump into the air, what I want to do because I want to wake up this phoenix, uh, the good phoenix, and I want to cast thunder wave, and I feel like that'll wake him up, knowing that it might cause some damage to people in fifteen feet of me. But that's what I want to do. Okay, so this is this is the the, the much talked about during session zero co- 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 combo move um, that we've never done before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, Delmore, this is your choice. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you want to give up your next turn to do this right now, it's a thing you can do. All right, let's do it. You give up your next turn. Both of you make with disadvantage because it's an ability check. Uh, a strength of athlete, both of you athletics, because you're jumping and you're throwing. I wish I had been within 15 feet. I got a natural one with this advantage. Devin? I got a 15 with this advantage. Okay, um, so what's going to happen is you're basically going to be like, I need you to throw me. And Delmore's like, yep, got it on board. And you jump, you, you get a little bit of a running start and you jump as, as, as high as you possibly can. You just step on Delmore. <laughs> you use him as like a, okay. a, a, a stepping stone. Um, so with a 15, I'll say you're, you're an athletic boy. What's your raw strength score? Uh, shoot, raw strength is actually, it's not super great. <laughs> it's 13. It's not terrible. Yeah, okay. Um with 15 with based on your your raw strength, I'll say that you got a you got a pretty mean vertical leap. I'll say you're able to jump 5 feet in the air plus the additional 3 feet you get from stepping on Delmore. You get you get you get 8 feet in the air, my friend. I spread my hands like an angel and just go. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Um, that's not what Demo would say. I mean, uh, Finnegan would say. Uh, but Thunder Wave. So everyone in a 15 foot cube. So I'm sorry, Delmore. That is you as well. Has to do um, a constitution. It's a 15 foot cube centered on you? Yeah, because it comes from me. That's why I had to get high enough to make that bird is 20 feet in the air. You didn't get high enough. You said he's 20 feet. If I jump eight feet and he's. He's right there, right? It's fi- 15 centered on you. 15 total? Yeah, 50, so a, a that, cube centered on you mm-hmm. would be seven mm-hmm. and a half. Mm-hmm. That means it's seven and a and half. It's centered on you. You yeah. cannot move that. You're not going to reach it. You will hit people if you do that. So, okay, and, but, so with, with your jump, 15 and a half feet up. Yeah, you would have had to You know what? It's an audible boom of 300 feet. Bring it on. You do it. Uh, only fifteen people with only people within range have to do damage. damage but, yeah, right. That's so, three hundred feet. Yeah. Right. Uh, so Delmore is the only one I think. Con, con save. Yes, uh, thirteen. Uh-huh. Oh, that's not terrible. Oh, I I beat it. I rolled higher than that. It's yeah. fine. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's half just, damage. It's half damage. Yeah. Hold on. <sighs> uh, three, three, six, or so three. Okay. Um, I cannot stress enough uh, that he steps on me for sure, but shield is up. Like, like my, my shield is like <laughs> yeah, up on my pad. head, and then he just like jumps off of me, and I don't react in time. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I like to think at least I get my shield up before he well, like, with, steps with on the, my with face. The natural one will give you that. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff on my face, man. Not on your face. Not on your. On like your back. Not the money maker. <laughs> That's fine. The money maker. Uh, so this huge echoing boom <laughs> comes out. Can I get the Finnegan version of that, please? I want to hear it. Oh! Fucking <laughs> throat singing. Did you redo? Yeah. You just drop an octave, just a few octaves. <laughs> I I thought that mine was good, um, but there's a big thunderous boom that sounds like that, and then um, I mean 
the cavern shakes. And you see some spots in the ceiling crack and widen and a little bit of lava pours out. Not, nothing that's like going to bring the ceiling down on you. Nothing that's but just an audible effect. And the phoenix that sits upon its perch, its feathers ruffle. <laughs> you do not see its eyes open. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, I tried. Um, it is Delmore's turn, but he skipped it to do combo it action, not, yeah. so it is Perry's turn. I'm going to cast Glaive. <laughs> cast it real <laughs> hard. <laughs> Ah, roll, roll, your, right? roll your Watch disadvantage spell that. attack. Shane, did okay. I notice the phoenix stir at all? Yes. Okay. Does a 15 hit? It does. Oh, bless. Okay. You cast bless? That's better. I know, I can't turn. do that yet. Um, <laughs> that's eight points of damage. Eight points Ooh. of damage. Bring the total to 11. Yeah, and, and sure enough, you your glaive slices through this, and it's it's not like wispy ash. It's not like air. There's physical form to this, and you feel your glaive kind of tear through the surface of it, and ash kind of pours off, and it gets in your face and your eyes, and it's just so goddamn hot. As you see within this ash, there are faint glowing embers, a, a sort of burning core. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And that will be Oslo. I'm shoot it. Shoot it good. Shoot her. Um, that's gonna be a fifteen. That'll hit. That hit. That hit. Roll your damage with sneak attack. I think. Uh, it's flanked. It's in yes, combat can, with Carrie. Can you get a sneak attack if the attack roll has disadvantage there? Unless. Ooh, the that's a good question. Yes. I'm pretty distracted. I will. I will let confer to DM, but or defer to DM, but. There's no ruling that I remember this. Uh, there is. You don't need advantage on the attack roll if no enemy is within five feet of it. The enemy isn't incapacitated, and you don't have disadvantage on the attack oh, roll. Really? You do have disadvantage on the attack roll. You cannot sneak attack. Roll normal uh, damage. You got easy with that, dude. This game is so hard. I, dumb, stupid I game. I still never play Rogue. It's going to be a <laughs> stupid, stupid game I've ever played. Seven damage. Um, <laughs> seven back. damage is still very good. Dang. And, and I think, Perry, you're the only one who really sees the impact here as the arrow flies and just hits this molten core on this on this large ashen bird. And the arrow slowly starts to burn as well. These are so inefficient. No, you're doing great. Uh, and that will bring us to our Dark Eagle's turn, who does not appreciate the glaive that it just received. So it's going to it it transform. Or is it still a phoenix? It is. I need to know. What did I say? Dark eagle. eagle. I just say dark eagle. That's just my nickname for him. It's okay. a beagle. Okay. I just I beagle. just checked in. No, it's a phoenix how, for like sure. A, I, three levels of exhaustion. How tripped out am I? You know you're what I mean? Balls. Like, <laughs> this, it, it looks like it's it looks like a giant ashen phoenix, but it's got your mom's face. <laughs> Ooh, oh, Wait, each of us see our own yeah. mom's face. Or? Yeah. No, just Delmore. Delmore's the only one who just every, who every, every Delmore's, face. Delmore's mom. Del- yeah. Delmore, Delmore has reached the face. Delmore has reached the secret third and a half level of exhaustion. <laughs> I like the idea that everyone sees Delmore's mom's face. You know it's terrible. Mommy, see mom's face. Thank What's you. your AC, Perry? Uh, <laughs> sixteen. Without the shield? Without my shield. Okay, so one hit. Good. That's what I wanted. Uh, five <laughs> poison damage. <laughs> is it though? Is it what you wanted, Perry? And I, th- I think I think it's even even more rough for you as you're just buffeted by these dark winds that are coming off of this phoenix as it beats its wings, and you're just directly there, and the heat and the ash fills your mouth and your eyes, and you can't see, and you have to turn away, and it's very very unpleasant. It's like so um, windy. My hair is starting to come unbraided and just like flowing majestically behind me, but it's also terrible. Okay, well that's sad. that way to way to get the silver lining in there, <laughs> Finnegan, Finnegan. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and shift. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and go like, ahead. Tell I me was, about that. Uh, so what happens is, is uh, once I land on the ground from doing my boom, uh, at that time, uh, sort of the pain that's been that has hit me from the, the poison damage is trying to take effect, and my bestial appearance is trying to fight that out, and so my my fangs grow a little bit. Uh, longer than they would, like normally would, obviously. Um, and then my eyes take on a, a cat-like appearance. I'm going to charge up to this thing. 
or no, I can't. I guess I'm like 35 feet away, right? Uh, I'll say because you because you you did a leap forward um, on your athletics check that uh, yeah I'll, yeah you can you can move to meet it. Okay, uh, and as I move to meet it, I'm going to use primal savagery, uh, which is is uh, either just making a roll to attack this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, dang it! I hope that I hope that. Oh yes, plus five, fifteen. Okay, cool. Was that was that with disadvantage? It sure wasn't. <laughs> oh, but there was ten things. I same thing. Cool, ten. Uh, same uh, thing. Yeah, so, yeah, you hit. Uh, I'm gonna roll a d ten. That's a seven. Ooh. So I'll and I'll just kind of slash That's through. Poison damage, right? Yes, correct. Mm. Uh, it's not great that he asked that question. <laughs> Can't confirm. Mm, I'm tell hearing me, a whole lot of poison damage, and you go, "That's poison, right?" Tell, tell me what happens, Devin. You were in the middle of it. Yeah, so I, I see. So I kind of see like where the core might be. You mentioned like there's a, like a lava yeah. or a red core. I want to slash through that. It's like smoldering ash. So yeah, you, you come up and you and you slash, and your your elongated claws kind of dripping with this uh, primordial venom. You try to jam it in there as hard as you can. You can't quite. You try to smash it in your hand, and it's hot, and it's intense, and there's ash everywhere, and you have to pull away because of the heat. And it's Del Morster. Tell me about this perch that this phoenix is on. Uh, it's stone. It's about 20 feet up, and it leads up to like a, a very large um, nest. The nest is made of like... Um, uh, like branches of petrified wood, and on top of it sits this phoenix, which is obviously it, it, it looks like it's 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 molting or molted, um, molten even, uh, as there are flames that ripple through its body. These, these charred embers that uh, light up as it inhales and exhales with this this life of flame. Okay, and that's about twenty feet up. Twenty feet up so from the base. Me, yep. Let me ask a question from Delmore's point of view. Mm-hmm. Would it be super difficult to like thorn whip up there and essentially like try to pull myself up there using thorn whip as a method of transportation? It would not be easy. It would not be impossible. Now, look, I'm I'm so I'm trying to think as Delmore. Is that? With the fact that I'm like super fucking exhausted, even, that even I with think the that fact way that you're super exhausted, it's not going to be easy because you know you know that you've got you right. about ten feet of momentum off of that yeah. that whip. So like that's another ten feet you'd have to clear, and that would be kind of up to you how you made that gap happen. But you could definitely give yourself some oomph. Man, I just don't know. Uh, so, all right, so I, I, I shout to the team and uh, and say, uh, should I try and wake up that phoenix or help you fight? What if that thing attacks us too? I think one bird at a time. That, uh, but, but, that was the call. Yep. That was the response. That was the response. Uh, I'm going to go with gut instinct. I'm going to try and uh, throw and wipe up there. Yeah, uh, make first. Make first, make an attack first. Um, eleven is the attack. Okay, uh, and then a uh, great. Then make a an athletics or acrobatics choice. Check your choice. Um. Ooh, not terrible. I not apparently I'm not good at either of those things. But acrobatics it is. Uh, fifteen. So you are able to send your whip up. This 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 chain whip goes up into uh, on, onto this pillar where it connects and wraps around, and you just take the the momentum from this this living chain to swing you forward, and you kind of do like a like a somersault flip, and you stretch your hands out, and you catch just the bottom of this nest, just like a twig of petrified branch that's sticking out, and you're just kind of hanging there. Thank God I'm like, um, fuck, that's awesome. 
The way my whip works, to be clear, is it's got like a like an engine or a motorized thing on my okay. wrist. So when it normally pulls, like it does yeah. that using mechanics, so it just kind of yanks me so up. You're Fair enough. Ooh, that's so kind cool. Of. Whoa! It is very cool. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. That's my turn then. Okay. Uh, and then we are on to Perry. I'm just going to do the thing that's worked for me in the past, which is hit it with my glaive really hard. And a cast glaive. <laughs> okay. cast glaive. All the attack. <laughs> it's not super creative, but it's what I've got. <laughs> 17. With disadvantage? Yes. Okay, then yes, that hits. <laughs> Where are my dice? There they are. That's 10 points of damage. Oof. With and the other it's, it's it's like clockwork with you guys. It's in it, you know, because this is happening super rapidly. So as Delmore's swinging up here, you see Finnegan reach his claw and he's doing everything he can to hold on to it. And he has to pull away. And as soon as he pulls away, you're coming down with your glaive on top of it. And you strike true and you bite into this core and you press with all your might and you pull it free. And it roars in pain, but it remains one physical form as it is Oslo's turn. Hey, I learned another thing. Mm-hmm. I, have, one. I have pack tactics, which you I do. have advantage on an attack roll against a creature if at least one of your allies is within five feet of the creature and the ally is not incapacitated. That's true. Which could so feasibly... It's a standard attack roll. Yes, make it a standard attack roll, which in this case, this time around, might give me sneak, question mark? Could, because he's not an attack with disadvantage. Ooh. Mm, I, mean, I didn't know you had that. Ah, I got an 18 on the die. So that's a hit and roll your damage with sneak attack. With the yeah. That is eight damages. Eight damages. You're a snake, a snake, a snake. I'm a snake, a snake. <laughs> As yeah, once again, you, you let an arrow loose and you just are able to thread the needle in between your two allies, just waiting for the appropriate moment to strike. And, and as you pull your glaive away, and as you pull your hand away, this arrow sinks in to the core and begins to smolder. Uh, it is the Dark Phoenix's turn. Uh, it is going to roll two attacks against. Oh, cool! <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm right here. I got you. Nobody else is here. It's just me and you, Bird. I got you, Bird. Uh, well, you're always a scary-looking one. Your AC is 14. You know it. Okay, that's two hits. Night, night. Six damage. I'm out. Yep. And as these two dark wings come down with this 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 toxin bellowing out from it, and you see Finnegan just choking as he slowly loses consciousness and falls down, you hear a deafening roar from above as this phoenix shouts in ah crap in, in a language that you understand and comprehend whatever language it was that you grew up on whatever language it was that your parents or whoever raised you spoke to you when you're young you hear the voice come through loud and clear enough as this gout of flame as this 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 wall is toward this blade of flame comes from this phoenix as it shouts and just destroys this ashen beast and it falls completely away into nothingness Oh, I've played this video game. Somebody had to die before we could win the fight. Uh, no, the Dark Phoenix got five turns, shortened to four, thanks to the Thunderclap that woke the Phoenix. I'm, it was a survival uh, game. That's cool. There was no way you were going to... Um, I'm, I'm grabbing Finn. I'm grabbing Finn, and I'm going to cast Lay on Hands and bring him up to three hit points. And you feel a cool ocean breeze. As soon as he comes back, I'm going to say, we have to stop meeting like this Finnegan. <laughs> I'll say, that's too... <laughs> Are you all right? Uh, I pull myself up off the plateau. To be clear, <laughs> yeah, up I, onto the plateau, I, I actually make a strength saving throw. <laughs> uh, is, it, is it to stay on the ledge? It is. Okay. Yeah, it's not a magical effect. I would have told you. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I'm just asking every chance to get. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not great. Um, it's fuck. It's a three. I'm going night night. You begin to fall. <laughs> yep. It's gone hard. Can I try and grab him? No, he's too far away. Uh, I I I think you still have the whip in your hand. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you just kind of fall I and hang uh, like oh, okay. 10 feet below, just kind of <laughs> swinging <laughs> just from where this Phoenix roared and kind of this big flush of flame came off. No yeah, damage. I was doesn't real crazy. worried about the stick that I was holding when you said the flame. Was like, oh. <laughs> no, it, it's like, it's like petrified. It's, almost like, it's, it's, it's actually more stone than wooden at this point because it's so petrified oh, okay. and fossilized from the, the intense heat. Um, but then uh, your congratulations, you're out of combat. You solved my survive five shortened to four turn puzzle. Um, and then you hear the voice. Who are you? I will, in, in a tired voice. Oh, great firebird of the volcanic island. I come to you, but a humble man, a mortal, seeking your help in a mission. What is it that you seek? We seek your power. You behold my power. Your ability to save. Ability to save? Your power of restoration. Stick around. We cannot stick around for long. We are slowly dying in these mortal bodies. You don't have to stay here, little one. Where do we stay? You can wait on the island. What do you mean? My life, my current cycle grows short. My sun sets. And when that happens, I shall be born again. New and young. And when that happens, there will be a great release of energy. And this island that withers and dies as I wither and die will be born again with great life, great prosperity. If you seek my healing and restorative powers, all you have to do is wait. How long? And I'm going to look back over at the, the rest of the party. How, how long do we have to wait? About, it is hard to say, not long. If you're somewhere else when this happens, does that effect happen to wherever you are? My reach is limited. Only my home is affected. So if you're not in your home and you go poof, Oh, when you said you, I thought you meant the Roy of you. I thought you meant like yourself. Nah. If I am gone, no, it'll happen wherever I am. Right. Home is where you nest. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I agree. Uh-huh. I'm going to look over at my two compatriots who are on the ground that I can see more easily. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you straight, Great Phoenix. Okay. Joaquim, we need you to come back with us. Oh, why? There is a man who sent us on a mission. He believes that if you do not come and give him whatever magic you have, that he will die if he leaves the ship. So he's a prisoner of his own home. Why, why does this and he, he, you see this bird kind of look around why why does this affect me I I okay why should I go with you why are you deserving of my will so, so I'd like to pull myself up on the plateau is that possible yeah I mean like, sure I, yeah 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 so I, I pull um myself up and I'm kind of like grunting and exhausted and um, I like kneel before this bird and like put my helmet on the ground and say, um, it, it occurs to me that you might be the only one of your kind. Is that fair? It is true. Are there, 
I don't know you, and I have no right to ask this of you. But we're, we're on a quest for the proprietor of the menagerie, and he believes he's cursed. And he's, he's asked that we bring your energy to him so he can survive off of his home. And I know that has nothing to do with you. I also know that you're alone. And honestly, so am I. But it sounds like if you help, I can see my friends again. And like, I'm like saying this, but I'm not like shouting this. I'm like saying it kind of like directly to him. Mm -hmm. And I have nothing to offer. But I ask, would you please come with us? Hmm. It doesn't matter to me where I go. I I exist beyond time and memorial. I do not cease to be. And I'll go with you if that is what you truly wish but know that this island cannot survive without me if I leave it dies is that a price you're willing to pay think about Master Steven and Eddie it's not a decision I would make lightly and I would want to try and get the two people that I know off of this island. But I'm worried that if I if I don't find my friends this world, these islands, there's going to be a bigger cost if we just don't do anything. Very well. I will go with you. He's in you, and it, it kind of it cranes its head down, and you're just staring in this massive iris, just this sunburst of orange and red and golden hues, and it looks directly into you, Delmore, no one else, as it says, "I will go with you." And um, you, uh, the phoenix will see like um, a look of like gratitude. Like something that he normally doesn't like have that like expression because he's always for the most part been the smart person in the room or been like in elite status of some kind and it's very humbling to just have been honest and, and still receive what he needed and uh, he looks back and says thank you And, um, ah, okay, okay. And I, so I think I rappel down and just, um, before you can leave the, the Phoenix, uh, you kind of see it begins to glow with this flame and very briefly it is a light in its entirety, as you might imagine in its prime, as this light begins to condense slowly and slowly to one small point, And there is sitting in the nest, um, about the size of a, human fist a red orb and so the phoenix turns into this red orb mm-hmm. and so um, I pick it up and I assume it's hot or is oh, it it's, just it's, normal it's, it's thrumming with this warm energy and as you pick it up and look at it as you kind of twist it to, to look at it, at it in the light you see that same sunburst that you saw in the eye of the phoenix and um, so I pick it up and I say um can't thank you enough. Is there a way to get down without repelling? You're probably gonna need to repel. Okay. Um, Unless somebody so catches I, uh, you or something. I don't know. No, no, no. So I, I uh, like get in my left hand. I put my shield away, mm-hmm. um, and in my left hand, I, I cradle the in my like, my arm is that I cradle this orb, and I like manually attach my chain, and then slowly repel down using like the engine. Um, and when I drop, I, uh, I, I kind of look at 
the team and I'm holding this orb and I say, um, we have to go get Steve and Eddie and then we have to leave. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Let's go. And you depart. And you leave this dark, earthen, warm chamber and find yourselves on the very luckily much cooler surface with the sun shining. Oh. So on the way, on the way out, um, we're still in this heat chamber. Delmore is exhausted. He's just sweating. Just now he's got this added orb, and for the briefest of moments, as he's like exiting. He doesn't see Finn. He doesn't see Harry. He doesn't see Oslo. He sees his three friends, like their images. I got you. The viewers at home will know too. No one else. Yeah, I don't. I wish I did, but I don't. Soon, very one soon. Day. Beautiful. How? And you emerge to the surface. Ah! So much heat. <laughs> I immediately begin stripping off my chainmail. Yeah. It's just, it's <laughs> Dang. terribly hot. How long do we have Dalmore before the island dies? I, I, we have as long as it takes for the Phoenix to experience its rebirth. And Reason tells me the quicker is better. We need to go get Steve and Eddie and try to convince them to get off the island. I, th- I think the island will be fine while we're here, but we don't need to waste any time. But do we want you at the helm of a ship again while you are this tired, Captain? Or should we rest? We can rest on the boat. I think... I think we'll be all right. Um... Moving forward, uh, honestly, uh, you don't give yourself enough credit, Perry. I really rely on you more than anything else. And I think between the two of us, we can get some rest and at least get going. All right. We have to get Eddie and Stephen. I agree. I would like to try uh, speaking to them again when I'm not trying to cheat them out of something. I that was wrong of me. Yeah, maybe we don't punch Finnegan. Oh, sorry, <laughs> he'll super die. <laughs> I, I just laid on hands. Now I'm gonna throw hands. <laughs> <laughs> now you catch I'm these hands. My hands, hands on, on you, all right? Boy. <laughs> Podcast, catch these hands. So. Delmore wants to uh, just kind of like start walking uh, yeah, in that direction. In, enter Eddie and Stevens. So are we going to try and find out what's in their cellar? I don't think it matters. No, also, I don't. I really think we did something wrong last time. Okay. Mm-hmm. As she says, I really Harry. think we did something wrong last time, her hand starts going up towards her neck and then drops to her side. I it might be best for you. All right. To talk to them. She's no longer wearing her armor, and she intentionally leaves her sword, her glaive, her shield, and her dagger outside. She's wearing a simple tunic, simple trousers, sailor's boots. And she walks up to the door. Do you all approach or just Perry? No. Perry. Oh no, not not Delmore. Perry, it is. I'm gonna knock on their door. I'm gonna knock on yeah, what door. is what is it? What do you need? <laughs> Eddie, Stephen. Yes, dear. It's Peregrine. Do you remember? I there's fucking four of us on the whole goddamn island. But yeah, I was trying to be polite. <laughs> we have an offer. I didn't see two of the others. Huh? What did you? They didn't see two of the others. I'm just. D- D- Dwayne was counting on his fingers, and I was like, they didn't see two of the other people. They only saw two of you that approached. So they said, they only think there's four. Go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. 
Uh, we have um, a proposition to make. Oh, I'm all ears. How would you like to see the world beyond this island? Oh, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it a long time ago. It was nice. Yes, it still is nice. Um, eh. There are wonders in this world you haven't seen yet, and I promise you that. Eh. <sighs> All right, I'll be straight with you because I wasn't before. Okay. There is a phoenix on your island, or there was. No, I would know about that. If there was a thing like that, I would know. There was. Okay, sure. And it was... Go ahead. <sighs> You're not making this easy. Yeah. It was the only thing keeping your home alive, and I understand that you have built a life here, and I understand that leaving will be difficult, but you have to come with us if you want to continue seeing each other's faces every dawn. And you kind of see, like, the this, the wry smile fade away from this very old man, and he says, uh, so... You got it then. You got the phoenix. Yes, we did. And he kind of walks over to the the two rocking chairs there and he sits down next to Eddie and he puts his hand on his hand and he says, um, well, okay then. Will you come with us? No, no, this is, this is our home. We know what happens next. We're, we've been here for a while. How long, Eddie? How long has it been? Ah, uh, six, six hundred years, six, something like that. Hundred? Yeah, so there's this phoenix. You you met him. Yes. He's fine. He's... Um, he, uh, he, like, brings life to all the things that are around him. It's really great. And about every 50... So we crashed here. Wasn't supposed to be here. We crashed here. And then, um... We found... Life. And it was beautiful, but it didn't last very long. About 50 years. It's about how long it was good. And we thought that was the end. But then, boom! This light! And it was crazy! And then we were young and healthy and uh, you know we we went about living and we found more life and we found love and we found joy and then it started to fade again not the love that's all the time but the life started to fade from around us and we thought oh well nobody gets this lucky twice and then there was this light and then we were young again and well, it, it went on that way for a while, and we figured out why it was this phoenix. And he was a nice guy, and he wanted us to do some things for him, so we did. Nothing crazy, we just had to... Appear, he's kind of big in the head, uh, high and mighty type. Um, apparently some some fucking elves used to worship him or something, so like we just had to hold his vigils, and that made him happy. And then... So we did that, and then you came along. And that's, that's, you know what, it's okay. Um, we've, we've had more years and more happiness than either one of us deserves. So if you got to do what you got to do, then that's, this is our home. And I think that we're just gonna, we're just gonna stay here. <sighs> and Eddie kind of chimes up and he goes, I kind of wish I would have died young, but not like, when I was young the first time, I just said, being old sucks, and I kind of wanted, we were like really close to being young again. Um, this is, you know what, it's, you're right, it's fine. I am very sorry to hear that. Um, and I, far be it for me to think that I have the power in my hands to make a life and death decision for someone. But... The offer still stands if you want to come with us as although as I have recently said to a good friend of mine you have had a good run of it 
Yeah. As well, I mean, it's not like we're going to die in like a minute or something. Like the, the island will has still had a little bit of life in it. And we've got our cellar. We've got, you know, plenty of food squirreled away. So we got, we got as long as we got. You, you said you were sailors. You crashed here? Yeah, long. Oh, yeah. How long ago was it, Eddie? Ah, oh, six, six hundred years ago, something like that, give or take. Regardless of the decision you make, would you mind if I said a prayer? Uh, sh- sure. Yeah, go nuts. What do you got? Some paylor? You got some uh, some ba- baphomet? You got some baphomet? You got some no quinceanera? You got some. Quiz, quiz the column? Well, those are... Iron Tusk? Is Iron Tusk the great and powerful? Unfortunately, no. Um... Got some... Got some win? Got some... Got some... Rutabagas? <laughs> Although those are all very powerful gods. Rutabaga is the strongest. Rutabaga is the most powerful. powerful. <laughs> Gotta call him the one above all. The root vegetable destroyer. You know what? Go ahead. Oh do your thing. We're, uh, it's been a while. Go ahead. Um, I ain't got to confess to nothing, do I? Because you ain't got enough time. <sighs> no. Um, I don't think he works like that, given what I've gotten away with. Um, I'm going to kneel on the floor. Out of my priest pack, I'm going to pull a small pewter bowl. I'm going to put it on the ground in front of me. I'm going to put two small dried fish bones in it. And I'm going to pour salt water on them. Mm-hmm. Lord Iono, heal your servant. For whatever reason you saw fit, these men crashed here and have lived a good life. And I have been responsible. For many of those, in a way. Um... Sorry. Uh, Protect them, regardless of if they enter your domain or not. And I'm going to take out the two now salt water soaked fish bones and place them on the ground in front of Eddie and Stephen and pick up the small pewter bowl and drink the salt water. Stay your course, shield of sailors. And I'm going to end my prayer uh as you do you look up and you see uh steven just kind of uh, politely sitting there with his hands clasped, like oh th- how very nice but you see in eddie uh a kind of change you see kind of he looks very solemn he looks very pleased i can't make a decision for you but the ocean is still very beautiful and the sun still rises every morning. And I'm gonna stand up and leave. Okay. You rejoin your group? They're not coming. Well, I mean, do we want to make them? I don't think so. They have the right to end their days as they lived them. And that's not a decision we get to make for them. Mm. They're looking pretty good for 600 years old, also. What? 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 Don't more smiles. <laughs> no, what? What? What are you talking about? What? What? Well, let's. Can we explain it on the yes, ship? Maybe? Yes, yes. I want to go to bed. But you're not. No, what? Um, the, what are you talking about? Six hundred. No. <laughs> As you go. Yeah. No, she's. Let's go. She's off, walking. Though. And sputtering. Um, and Delmore is like the last to like kind of get track, and he takes one of these orbs, one, the one he had used to record the the phrase. Mm-hmm. And he like points it at Stephen and Eddie's like home, and like records that image into the orb. You got it. 
Uh, and kind of as we walk away, I'll put my, I'll walk next to Perry and I'll put my, my hand kind of on her shoulder and say, uh, you did your best. <sighs> That's the easy thing to think, isn't it? Sometimes it's the only thing. Thank you. And you guys go back to the ship? Yep. We ship it. As you approach on the shore, uh, you are greeted by Barnabas. And he looks kind of disheveled, and he's coming ashore with his dinghy. He goes, oh, thank God! Look! Fuck me! And he points off to the horizon where you see three ships with the lion's colors. <laughs> And that's where we're on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> never no. ends, never fucking ends. No. Oh, oh and by the way, uh, congratulations. <laughs> 1.5. Three. On, on, survi- oh, on surviving. Oh, so my god, I hate you oh. so much. <laughs> Somehow. The oh, difference between Devin, he's like, just, Devin goes, I just want half a level. <laughs> I'm gonna go for two, I'm gonna go for two, I'm gonna go for two. <laughs> and level two, yes. level two. We are? Oh. Hey, it's just like is this like Final Fantasy and shit where I just or like wow where I go to full HP, full mana? Absolutely not. <sighs> and no full okay. levels of exhaustion either. Damn, it's worth Damn. asking. Alright, cool. Let me level up. Uh, I guess I can do that during the break. Uh, well, so so one thing I did what I did want to throw by you guys, if you wanted to do it, we could do like the critical role thing where if you guys want to roll for HP, we can do that live on level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm down. Okay. Okay. I'll do that so right now. uh Dwayne. Wait, first. hold on. Yeah, okay, yeah. What is that for me, too? Uh one no, you're, you're a fighter. Oh, I'm at ten. Ten. Yeah. yeah. Ten. No, you're a fighter. Oh, you're a paladin. Ten. 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 All right. One d eight. All right. That's a five plus two. Five plus seven HP. Nine. Start. Yep. It's a one. Do I have- reroll ones. Okay. We roll ones. Reroll ones. Cool. Okay. You That's are you are a merciful god. Thank cool. you. That's also a one. <laughs> reroll ones. Okay. Motherfucker! I'm gonna stop. Well, okay, there we go. Okay, no, you Jesus get one. Christ. You get three. Uh, eight. I got eight hit points total. Nice. Ray. Jesus fuck. Uh, that's nine more hit points for nice. your goals. And Devin. Yeah, we're on. What is mine? What is it? A D eight? I think it's a D eight. It's a D eight. Yeah, it's a D eight. A druid. A druid. What's up, Drew? What's up, Drew? What's up, Drew? It's a seven. <laughs> nice. He's Drew. She's Drew. We're all Drew's here. <laughs> Drew. Drew, where's my car? I'm so glad you guys are uh, here. So, that's all that I have. That's all the gifts that I have to bestow. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, do you folks have things to say to the viewers at home? Absolutely. So we'll go ahead and kick off with our role for humanity. Uh, this month, we actually are, are going to do an audible, and we are donating the money that we roll this month to a girl I work with, her niece. Uh, four months old, found out she has mm. something called hydrocephalus. So it's extra fluid that puts pressure on the brain. There was a tumor they found. Uh, it is a little cancerous, and so they've had to... Uh, try to cut that out as much as they can. Gets pretty close to the brain, so it's very touch and go. Uh, since then, they've hooked up some tubes like, that pull some of this cerebral fluid out of her brain, uh, get some of that pressure off. Um, and so right now, she's going to be going through some chemo. Uh, again, it's a four-year-old. They're going to put a shunt in later uh, as well, along with the chemo. And so we are donating money. She has... Um, a GoFundMe up, and so that link will be included in this. Currently, she's raised twenty six hundred of ten thousand dollars. We don't know how much. Um, you know, these, these can probably can be very expensive. She's still in the hospital. She's been in the hospital for a long time now, and so I'm uh, gonna go ahead and roll for that one. I can't make it up. It's it's a critical twenty, and so I'll do. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna add D ten to that. Okay. Uh, I had one here. Here it is. That's five. So we are going to do 25 for this first roll. Um, that's going to baby Hayden. I love it. Thank you very much. Thank that's you. awesome. Mm-hmm. I actually, I have a, a special guest um, who would like to make, who would like to make a, a speech and um, 
a pitch, if you will. You all may have seen him sort of lurking behind me on the call. He's been here the whole time, but uh, hey, if you want to just... Uh, yes! They called me crazy for you. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. I, I know, but it's... Uh, yes! But they don't know the truth. What are you talking about? I thought we were... Uh, yes, yes! I thought we were going to talk about the Patreon, dear. Didn't you? I... Yeah, I did. No, no, crazy, crazy. They called me crazy, but no, I discovered the truth. I signed the pact. Now I am the most powerful warlock. Okay, okay, okay. I'm the most powerful warlock. The world. Okay, okay, okay. I am the most powerful warlock. My patron is powerless. Oh, okay. Um. Shut up. I, dude. We talked about this. We, you gotta stay out of the kimchi. I know. I'm powerful and crazy. They said crazy. We know what it does. To, okay, ignore him. I'm. He's. I. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, uh, you, dear listener can be the lawfully crazy one if $20 a month is what you feel you want to give to this uh, <laughs> podcast. Um, that is the name we have we have chosen to call the, uh, the $20 a month tier, if that is something that is interesting to you. And uh, at that level, you get your very own lawful stupid t-shirt. You can't see it, but I can see it with my special eyes. Uh, three... Devin, what are you wearing? <laughs> I can't see you. Whoa, is this our first day? I'm wearing a gentry shirt. This is a bit. <laughs> Coward. Uh, three, out five pod- Coward. <laughs> three out of five stupid cast agree. The lawful stupid t-shirt's pretty neat. Uh, you check the store right now. We have a uh, our brand new logo for mogul. Ooh. Logo for campaign two. Uh, it features a, a uh, schooner, if I'm not much mistaken, mm. and a, a cloud dragon, as well as three silhouettes plus one off of another silhouette. It's attached to the one silhouette. I'm counting three silhouettes, plus one wolf, plus a small lizard friend. This has gone south. Yes, it has! Dude, dude, (laughs) bippity-boppity back off. But if if $20 a month is something you feel you want to give, that helps with our our cost of operations. It really helps make this podcast a, a better one. Um, it helps. I agree. <laughs> update, <laughs> it helps uh, updating equipment. Um, production value goes up, and again, t-shirts pretty cool. Yes, it's a very cool t-shirt. You, why? Well, look at my t-shirt. They called me crazy. Yep, yep. And we are going to continue doing that. Anyway, back to use. Yeah, so real quick, uh, I begin to move my hands in arcane gestures, um, tracing glyphs and sigils as they erupt with two middle fingers, and I cast banishment on Kimchi forever and ever and ever. And I know he's native to another plane, yeah. so he has to remain there if I maintain concentration for one minute. So no one talk to me. Uh, instead, someone else talk. I have to focus. All right, well, while you're focusing on that, uh, come join our Discord as well. We don't have creepy creatures like kimchi, but we do have some amazing Patreons. We do no have promises. It does true. We do have some amazing fans. Uh, you can come in, talk about D&D with all these new friends you've got. Uh, we can come play some D&D. We have the special Iron and Ivory games that are going on, which is a 5e, very challenging uh, one-on-one, uh, one-off sessions, not one-on-one. It's like five people. Uh, we also do some AL games, um, and everyone's just super supportive, and we have a great time in there. Come and join our Discord. Like yeah, come we'll join be waiting it. for Discord. you. With the thing and the thing, and God damn it, Kimchi's yes, back. Yes, you thought you could contain me, but now I'm just going to the fridge to get more fermented cabbage. <laughs> you need to get a lozenge, uh, Dwayne. Yeah, uh, and if you want to support the show, if if joining Discord isn't enough, if being a Patreon isn't enough, if doing Roll for Humanities isn't enough, uh. We have a merchandise store. You can go to store.lawfulstupid.org. 
You can get one of uh, the new logos on a t-shirt. You can get one of the classic logos on a t-shirt, uh, as well as there's more things. Um, and we're always adding, we're always rotating. Um, but if that's the way you want to support and get some cool swag, I'm wearing one of the new shirts now. Super, super comfy. Uh, there's other ways. You can go and do a Audible trial. You can use our coupon code at Cantrip Candles. You can get an endless bag of dice with Critical Dice. And you can find that stuff in the show description as well as going to our website. If you want to support us, there's so many ways to do it. And we're very thankful every time you do. We're also incredibly thankful for anybody who tweets about the show using the hashtag StupidCast. Do you want me to sing your praises live on the show? Do you want to hear Kimchi talk about your characters? Yeah, let's um, do it. No, no one, no one, no one wants it. But you could have that if you if you use the hashtag StupidCast. And uh, of course, I will leave you with the question of the <gasps> evening, which is: If there's a Mother Nature, who's the daddy? Time, follow mm. time. Oh, that's me. Done. Yes. Thanks, everybody. We love you. Bye. 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 Bye.